Now, in the last lecture, uh, we looked at uh, how we can define uh, implicit weight and uh, the explicit weight uh, um, in the code, right? So, while locating the elements, that implicit weight can be globally defined, but it works for uh, the visibility, uh, the presence of the element only, whereas explicit weight works for other conditions as well. Like the condition could be visibility, could be presence, could be and number of other conditions. But in case you specifically want to uh, define a condition of your own, let's say uh, in explicit weight, we have uh, a class called as expected conditions. So instead of this uh, with timeout, I can call another method from this page objects that is wait for uh, page object class that is wait for condition. So this wait for condition, I can call a method that is until, right? So wait for condition dot until, until the condition is true and this will be given with the help of expected conditions. So expected conditions and you can see we have all these expected conditions coming. Uh, wait till the time alert is present, wait till the time element to be clickable, uh, wait till the time presence of elements. So if I uh, try to use uh, this method presence of element located so located I can give uh, by dot xpath and I'll try to use this xpath so the same xpath where we are entering the password I'll just copy it and paste it here and then I'll say dot send keys dot send keys and I'll enter my email ID over here. Right. And now if I run this code again, so this is what expected conditions. And it's actually coming from Selenium web driver itself. Okay, I didn't enter anything and it errored out. Let's see why it errored out. So it says timeout exception presence, waiting for presence of element located by this. But if you know, I mean, uh, is there anything in the expo that shows no such element? So why it's showing no such element? If I use it without this condition, and if I use it with this, with timeout, so I'm using the same xpath, no change in the xpath. See, it worked fine. But why is it not working with this condition? Because here, as I said, it's not related to presence. It's not related to implicit weight. Uh, implicit weight it is actually applicable for presence. So we have used the condition as presence over here. So instead of presence, we actually need to wait till the time element becomes intractable. Right. So what we need to use over here, we need to use over here something element to be clickable instead of presence. So this is the condition that we should be using because clickable will going to happen when the element becomes intractable, then only it becomes clickable. Right. So there is no method that says element to be intractable. So here we actually need to use element to be clickable. So this is one method from the expected condition from the explicit weight itself and if I run this now let's see will it gonna work or not and it's still not working and let me see now the expert that we have given is correct. And if I uh, run it on Firefox, if I go over here, 
change this to Firefox. So where we have specifically defined Chrome, uh, not this. We change this to Firefox. And let's see. Okay, it's still not working. And we should get some exception. Exception says uh, timeout exception, expected condition failed, waiting for element to be clickable by link text. So, have we used link text? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> this was the issue. So we should have used XPath. Now, let me run it. See, it worked, right? And if I change this to element uh, presence, it will not gonna work. See, presence of element located by xpub because this here the issue is related to the intractable of element not the presence see it didn't work and we got an exception element not intractable exception right so for intractable the expected condition to be clickable right so this is one form of explicit weight now you can extend this weight more towards uh, something called as fluent weight so fluent weight is uh, let's say if you have defined explicit weight or even implicit weight so let's say we have given 10 seconds or maybe if i give 100 seconds over here so it's not in our control that in 100 seconds it may gonna hit your script n number of times in order to locate that element or in order to find that element in the DOM. We don't want this thing. We want that our script should not uh, like hit our DOM n number of times. In 10 seconds, I want that after every two seconds, it should try to look for the element. So it means in 10 seconds, we want that only five times it should look for the element. Right. So I can define something called as polling. So polling as in... Uh, if I, I'll just comment out this part, copy this and paste it here. So with this uh, condition, I can define first the timeout. So timeout, I can define, uh, let's say, dot with timeout, because here we have not defined the timeout. So it is actually taking by default timeout, that is five seconds right but if in case you want to specifically define what timeout should be so with the help of this method with timeout you can define the duration so duration dot of seconds and you'll say that it should be 10 seconds and in this 10 seconds what we need to do is uh, dot poll every duration dot of seconds and give let's say two seconds and then give this condition not until that particular element is found right so this is what your fluent weight is now if you if i run this again it will not immediately going to type into that text box it will pull after every two seconds so it will first wait for two seconds will check the dom whether the element is there see it didn't type now it typed. So it actually waited for two seconds, right? If you're not, uh, if you think that it, uh, whether it has waited or not, I can try changing it to five seconds. So poll after every five seconds means in 10 seconds, it will wait first for five seconds, then search. And then again, if it didn't find, then it will search for another five seconds. So if I right click and run it now, you're gonna see the difference in the wait. Previously, it waited for two seconds. Now it will gonna wait for five seconds. See, it's waiting. After five seconds, it will hit that element 
and then done right so in in this you can try using couple more methods from fluent weight it's like uh, polling every uh, five seconds you want to add your own message to uh, the exception you can add your own message in in case let's say if it is not found in uh, 10 seconds then uh, you can write your own message exception while finding the element and wait it for 10 seconds so this is your own user defined message that will be added to the exception and uh, now we'll go over here and we'll incorrect this xpath so now this this element will not be found and if you run this now We'll wait for the element. For 10 seconds. And then we'll see an exception over here. Error expected condition failed. And exception uh, while, uh, okay, I have mentioned well. While finding the element and wait it for 10 seconds right so this is coming actually from the fluent weight so this is what the difference in uh, implicit weight the explicit weight and the fluent weight fluent weight and explicit weight are one of the same thing in fluent weight we can define some additional conditions as well right so but in explicit weight uh, like we can define the condition but with the help of explicit uh, sorry, expected conditions class, right? So th this is, uh, all these methods are actually coming from page object itself. If you go to this wait for condition, you're going to see the class that is page object. So all these methods are defined over here, right? So that's all in this lecture.